Thank the member. Recognize the member from Burnaby Lougheed. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Um, I can't agree more with my colleague, uh, member from Nelson Creston, to have this House acknowledge the work being done in other jurisdictions to reduce poverty. So it is my pleasure to support our motion this morning on behalf of Burnaby Lougheed. As we are very well aware, there is a string of sobering facts straight off of Statistics Canada that are echoed by a broad spectrum of stakeholders as well as the subject matter experts alike. And we've all heard it. Worst rate of overall poverty in Canada for 13 years straight, worst rate of child poverty, worst income gap, worst rate of child vulnerability, worst record of job creation, worst affordability, worst student debt, uh, debt levels. And that's worst as in dead last in this entire country. And not surprisingly, as it turns out, since we are apparently one of the only two provinces in the country without any plans for poverty reduction. And what I mean by that is no, a regional poverty reduction pilot plan with only 100 families or less wouldn't qualify as a plan for the half a million British Columbians living in poverty in this province, even if this abandoned pilot was to have continued. Now, what's more disturbing is that BC has seen an increase in poverty rate every year when across, poverty, uh, when across Canada, poverty rates have been decreasing. But of course, it's easy to tune out and look the other way when as governors, such unflattering and inconvenient facts of our own performance are repeatedly reminded. So instead of continuing to quote the numbers and trends that we are all aware of, as real as they are, let's draw faces. Faces to describe poverty. What does it even look like? Is that a well-deserved consequence for the so-called lazy in our society? Is it the addicts homeless on our streets? And I would say that that's hardly the case. Poverty looks like a young family of three, with the father working full-time at a minimum wage job without any benefits that are struggling to gross $22,000 a year while going to night school to better his odds, and the mother finding part-time gig for a few extra grand here and there while raising the child. Even so, they would together bring barely $2,000 a month home after 13% or 13 of income tax, which is ironic in a country that lets the biggest corporations pay as little as 1.25% for tax. So from that $2,000, let's take away two zone monthly transit pass for $124, or likely yet $170 for three zone as the housing costs drive people further and further away from the city dock off another $102 for MSP, and that's including, um, uh, that's after applying the subsidy. And it'll be, of course, many, many cold winter months now to keep gas and hydro bills for less than $80 with the rate hike, minus $1,000 for a basement suite, shave off another $100 for property insurance and phone bills. And you're expecting this family, what's left of it is essentially $20 a day. $20 a day for food, clothing, schooling, and all the life's incidentals. So it turns out one third of our poorest children in BC have parents that are employed and working full time year round. These are the people in our society that I think are just as hardworking and capable as many of us that are in this house, but without the kind of parents and relatives, their job benefits, insurance, savings plans, other resources and privileges in life that we have and we often take credit for ourselves. So I represent many of these families in Burnaby Lohi, a good portion of them from the immigrant community, and my family is one of them. My family, my parents are hardworking, intelligent people who came to this country, and it didn't matter how desperately they tried. We never had a family dinner together, but if it wasn't for access to quality education that was affordable with the student loans that were available, and if it wasn't for the different social um, services and programs that were available for me and my brother, my parents wouldn't have the kind of life that they have today. And nobody in this house can look at them in the eyes and say that you don't deserve a better shot in life. And so my family and I am a product of everything that was available in this country, that, is in, that was available in this province, that I'm seeing for myself now is getting worse and worse year after year after year. So what was available for my family is what I would like all of us to fight for to make sure that they continue on for the families that we have in BC and for the generations to come. Now, uh, one of the things that I want to highlight is for the, the special circumstances that our immigrant community faces um, who are disproportionately affected by poverty and are three times more likely 
to be poor than Canadian-born persons. So the census shows that compared with 9.7% of Canadian-born persons falling below the poverty line, a disturbing 34%, 34%, that's three times as much, of recent immigrants live in poverty. Immigrants arriving in Canada, as we know, face many challenges, and these challenges compound their um, ability to look for housing and employment. And I'll just <laughs> wrap it up at that, but I again thank the member from Nelson Crescent for her motion. Thank you.